Okay, very good morning. It is Friday the 21st of May. And just before I begin the regular briefing, don't forget to check out the latest Market Watch podcast. Piers and I, the head of trading, are going to be having a conversation later on this morning. And that latest episode is going to go out then. If you just go to amplifylive.com slash podcast, you'll be able to access all the major platforms from, from there, like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and so on. So do check that out and subscribe if you'd like to get that every single week. Uh, but look, let's get straight into it and talk about the charts and what's going on this morning. And yeah, positive close on Wall Street and a really strong rebound from what otherwise was that day of crypto kind of turbulence midweek. Uh, and even those cryptos to a certain degree stabilizing after the, the, the firm recovery we saw from that initial blip lower. And as far as equity markets are concerned, in the uh, close on the 90, the uh, S&P finished up about 1%, the Dow half percent, and as that 100 actually outperforming tech leading the uh, the recovery was up about 2%. Uh, as far as equity indices are concerned this morning, seen marginally higher once again, the DAX uh, center left here just finding encountering some near-term resistance at its Asia pack highs, um, but otherwise kind of fairly tight sideways action, just looking for the next kind of meaningful break now, whether I've a fundamental kind of catalyst to spark that, or just given a big push in either direction in, in equity markets, you tend to get then a period of consolidation. And it might not be until the US session, the reopening of the NYSE before we get the next kind of kick on in either direction. Um, but otherwise, just having a look in the NASDAQ future here in the center chart. So uh, again, really clear to see the, the how strong that recovery was yesterday. Um, and on a daily chart, you know, one of the things that we were watching just to see what the daily close would look like was, um, do we close above the, the 200 DMA, uh, of which we did. Uh, and that does, to a certain degree, um, keep things relatively... Uh, positive in terms of the bears now from a technical perspective. This is on a daily chart. Uh, that rectangle there is the one that we've been looking at um, throughout the entirety of the week. And that um, encompasses that double top that we had from the 16th and the 18th uh, that it failed to really get through initially. But now we're above that. Uh, you can see here not too much in the way of real technical resistance, I'd say. Perhaps we keep an eye here on 13,588 and then eventually a push back up uh, towards the, the price action we were trading the week prior and the bottom end of that range then we were trading in at uh, the end of April around 13,700. Um, so looking you know quite quite good there on, on the technicals despite generally some of the sensitivity that equities have, have been seeing. Uh, S&P up about nine points this morning. As far as the 10 year is concerned, uh, again, uh, just have this slightly annotated because it tells a bit of a story, I guess, for, for yields and where we've been. And really, we've not we've not gone anywhere. <laughs> uh, we've, we've definitely seen some volatility. And um, we obviously had that big CPI reaction, not this week, the prior week, where we saw that upside surprise, but that pretty much got discounted for a variety of reasons we've discussed before, uh, with a number of factors being somewhat more convincing of that transitory argument. Enim had the FMC minutes, and as we were discussing in this briefing yesterday, we, we didn't really foresee much real credible substance in that being still relevant, given the weakness that we've seen, like some jobs data and how dated those minutes were. We reversed uh, all of that move and some yesterday, really. And so near term now, I'm just keeping an eye on uh, kind of a short term weekly trend line, as you can see here, being relatively well respected, uh, very quiet price action through the majority of the Asia Pacific session. So just holding a bit of a, a range here. And, and as we go through, this is what I'll be keeping an eye on. But uh, all in all, doesn't really look too interesting unless we start to see a break on the upside uh, and we get this kind of push back up, looking to then use these previous uh, kind of trend line highs as targets. Uh, on the downside, um, not really looking too interesting unless I, I think we get down to the lower bound of the range of what we've had in the last two weeks, to be, to be quite honest. Um, otherwise, elsewhere in the commodity space, WTI crude, um, yeah, quite considerable selling pressure throughout the second half of this week. And on the daily chart, which we've been watching, is this trend line going from really the year-to-day price action. And we did actually close just beneath it uh, yesterday. And you can see we're just 
even irrespective of the fact we're up 17 cents and we've moved a little higher on the daily chart since we opened, we remain on the underside of that trend line for the moment. So in terms of the weakness of um, crude, it does come on the back of the fact that global powers taking part in the indirect US-Iranian talks on a return to the nuclear deal have accepted that US sanctions on Iran, including on its oil exports, will be removed and as such that's then brought in an expectation of the fact that Iranian supply will be coming back into market uh, and that's what's you know, kept the, the price under pressure throughout this week. Um, so if we do continue to remain a little heavy here, the kind of areas I'd look at um, as marked up here would be, if I put a rectangle, 60, 61. So you've got these lows on the 22nd, 26th was an area of support as well, beginning of April. So around here, and then uh, quite strong support I'd be anticipating further, much further down at 57.50. Uh, but these would be much more medium term moves because we're talk talking about multiple dollars away from the current price. So yeah, certainly we'll be interested to see how we uh, perform throughout the, the rest of today. Uh, but you know, one would say that we've already repriced here a good $6 or so, $5. And so how much of that Iranian news has already been priced in? Uh, at this point because ultimately as much as Iranian supply might come on the market we are still anticipating um, demand to increase over the coming months of course as western developed markets or, or economies continue to reopen but then also we start to see um, some more control over some of those outbreaks in Asia with places like India you've probably not really seen Indian COVID in the headlines much this week and that's because cases are going down and, and, and general mainstream media doesn't like reporting good news you know, it only reports bad news of course so uh, but these would all be positive indications of further at some point in time a more uniformed global based recovery which is going to obviously support demand so again still of that more medium term view that you know any any buying will ultimately be counteracted by um, or any selling will be counteracted by buying lower down uh, if, if oil does remain under pressure uh, otherwise just having a look at um the FX markets, the dollar's touch weaker this morning, worth keeping an eye on the dollar in fact, because if we get an extension of weakness, we could break through the uh, the lows from earlier this week and you know the euro's just kind of sat there at the moment in close proximity to the highs that we were printing um, two days back. And on the daily chart, you can see that these would be meaningful technical levels. Um, 122.49 here on the euro future daily um, that was the high back on the 25th of Feb. A breakout of that really would be targeting the 123 handle and sat just above that would put us back to the range where we were trading. Kind of uh, resistance mid-deck of last year and the 8th of Jan uh, would be the most obvious target. Uh, but certainly you know, any brief periods of dollar strength have been counteracted and the, the downward trend that has really been in place since April uh, continues to be the, the case at the moment as markets generally perceive that yes inflation is increasing but as far as uh, nominal yields are concerned if they continue to remain fairly constant and not reflecting um, this kind of outright concern about immediacy of, of near-term inflationary fears then the Fed were going to remain accommodative and now inflation perception will still be transitory and so dollar weakness uh, still prevailing to a certain degree and looking at cable this morning we've had a bit of a breakout here from the um, overnight kind of early Asia pack range. And so just moving up to where we were trading at the highs from uh, back midweek, uh, the 142 handle. Uh, so cable on the daily now, getting really close back to within about 40 pip striking distance of the year to date highs. We have had UK retail sales come out this morning, uh, month on month for April, 9.2% above the expected 4.5. Uh, and in fact, at 9.2%, that is very strong, but actually just inside the top end of the most optimistic estimate on the street, which was for 10%. Now, the reason why the figure is so strong, and there were some banks looking for a very strong number, is because this is April readings, and this was linked to the reopening of shops that we've seen during that month. And so naturally, retail sales with more ability for people to have spent in different ways was kind of on the balance expected to be a potential upside surprise but nonetheless cable a little bit buoyant here and as I said 
if we can get a continuation of those themes, then I'd definitely be keeping an eye out for, for further run-ups here on the, on the intraday chart. The R1 lines up pretty much with that high uh, that we saw back printed on the, the 18th, uh, so towards the beginning of the week. Um, could well come into sight uh, pretty quickly. Uh, all right, a couple of other news headlines just to keep you informed. Um, one is in the UK. Um, we still are keeping half an eye on this Indian a variant and its developments at the moment uh, because any real meaningful pickup in this could well have consequence then for the, the timeline of the execution of that final part of the four point roadmap in the UK uh, which is looking I would say more unlikely than not that we will reach that June 21st deadline for complete kind of dropping of any social distancing and so on um, so the number of UK cases of worrying of, of the coronavirus uh, variant from India has more than doubled. Uh, we're now standing at just shy of three and a half thousand for a second week. It's now increased as authorities also monitor. There's a new mu mutation of the virus. Um, it's called the VUI uh, 21, 21st of May 01, uh, basically at this moment. So it's quite date oriented. Uh, on the new uh, variant, the Pub Public Health England, the PHE, have said that there's currently no evidence that the variant causes more severe disease or renders the vaccines currently deployed as less effective. So, I don't know, for me at the moment, the way in which this Indian variant is performed and any subsequent mutation off the back of that is like what we're seeing reported at the moment. I think the mutation of this new one is about 49 cases at present. Given the fact that so far the vaccines appear to be still effective even through changes in the actual virus in itself given now the amount of the adult population that's already been vaccinated um, I don't see too much risk assigned to what's developing at the moment um, sure it might move the at the end um, kind of date for the overall loosening of restrictions for the UK beyond the 21st of June by a few weeks but ultimately, I don't think that makes a great deal of difference. And I don't see too much threat, at least at this point, as far as um, the pound is concerned, for example, to pull back on, on any of these Indian COVID concerns. Um, as long as the vaccines remain effective, I think we should expect more mutations in the future. And hence the reason why the likelihood for necessary, uh, the necessity for booster shots and so on as we go further forward in time. COVID's here for the long term. We just need to learn to live with it, essentially. So, yeah, that's my take on that at the moment. And then one of the other things was, you know, I did br briefly mention crypto. Uh, Bitcoin futures are kind of just tracking around a 39,000 to 42,000 band at the moment in, in the last couple of um, hours. Um, but something that was quite notable, it did see a slight drift in prices after that recovery we saw kind of late Wednesday and through Thursday was that the US Treasury has said the Biden administration's proposal to strengthen tax compliance includes a requirement for transfers of at least 10,000 US dollars of cryptocurrency to be reported to everyone's favorite friend, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. Um, so just something to, to be aware of. Um, again, one of the things, not immediate, maybe more long term, that given the shakedown in markets that we saw in the crypto space midweek and just given naturally the demographic trading that and the marketing pushes that we see from low commission platforms to try and trade things like cryptocurrencies for so on. Um, I mean, I was talking to Sam, obviously he used to be on the team and he's now working at uh, eToro and he was saying just generally the volumes of usage and activity there is almost 100% crypto. and. I think one of the main things I'm, I was going to make the point is is regulatory pushback uh, and the kind of the hazards entailed with quite aggressive marketing to try and tap into um, a fairly um, vulnerable market in terms of their education and over what things like leverage mean, for example. So uh, you've probably read lots of stories over over the last week about that in particular because. Um, you know, there was some the the selling pressure for it to materialize in the way that it did midweek in the likes of Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on uh, was due to a lot of liquidation of positions because of a lot of the leveraging that was happening. Um, and so, yeah, I think regu regulation 
even if it doesn't actually come to fruition, I think politicians might get a lot of political kind of points for making a bit of a um, a point out of why cryptocurrencies and the ensuing volatility that we saw is something that they should be talking about. Uh, as I said, though, you know, regulation change happens at a snail's pace, so I don't think it really impedes things in, in the short term at all for the price of, of various different cryptocurrencies. All right, quick look at the calendar. Um, we've got some important information coming out this morning. Uh, you've got the French and the German manufacturing service flash PMIs. So these are for May and these will ultimately be um, market moving. As to what degree, well, I'll be keeping an eye on the service number from France, expected at 53, which is improvement from 50 spot three. And then from Germany on the manufacturing side, expected to still remain particularly firm at 65.9 from 66.2. These figures should generally start to improve here on out because particularly in mainland Europe, um, the administering of vaccines has really started to pick up pace over the last month and a half, two months now. Uh, they're kind of really catching up after that really quite slow start uh, with the vaccination rollout program. And so as such, with case control becoming a little bit more effective as well, and case rates remaining lower, then basically people should start to become more optimistic about what the future can bring. And so these figures generally will either stay pretty high, like on the manufacturing side in Germany, or continue to improve uh, from quite low levels, like in the case of French service sector. So yeah, if that does materialize, obviously that could then uh, give the euro a bit of a propensity to break through that R1 and weekly high. And if we do, and the dollar breaks down, and cable's already on the firm footing on the back of the decent retail sales report, could see a nice progressive move in some of those directional trends that are materializing already this morning at the open. Uh, in the major currency pairs. Uh, the UK PMIs as well come out at 9.30. You get the US readings at 2.45. No major 1.30s from the US today. And the Eurozone Consumer Confidence flash reading at 3 p.m. Speaker-wise, um, there is a, a Euro Area Finance Minister and Central Bank Chiefs holding an informal meeting today. Uh, Christine Lagarde, the EU President, will be speaking at midday uh, at a Eurogroup press conference. As far as Fed speak is concerned, the only one really is Fed Daily, who is a voter. Uh, she'll be at 6.30 later on this evening. Uh, but that is it. So um, I'll let you guys get on with the day. Don't forget to check out the uh, podcast. Just go on to Spotify, Apple, search Market Watch by Amplify Live. You'll be able to find it. Otherwise, have a good session ahead and a great weekend. Thanks very much.